Alright, we're back, and as I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to show you a way that you can connect these variables together without having these really long, unsightly lines which reach across all your sequence objects. Now, if you don't mind those lines, in fact, if you feel better knowing that they're there, by all means, leave them. You don't have to take them out. This is something that I just thought I'd throw in because it's kind of cool. What we're going to use is a named variable. A named variable is kind of like a radio control variable. You give it a specific name, which is kind of like a radio channel, and it's just going to listen out for signals to come in on that channel, and it'll update accordingly. Here's how they work. First off, we need to designate kind of our base variable. He's going to be the guy that will actually change and store the data. So I'm just going to right-click out here in empty space, create a new variable, and since it's a Boolean value, true or false, we'll just create a basic Boolean variable. Now, notice every single variable you create has a var name property. So we're going to call this door lock with a little bit of capitalization to make it look interesting. And because I don't want to lose this guy, because you know he's just a tiny little variable, and as things got more and more complex, we might forget he was there, I'm going to select it, press C to create a new comment, and we'll call this named variables. And I'll make the box nice and big, like so. So that way, we've got a nice obvious area where any named variables will go. Okay, so this guy's going to store the data, but how do we get data over to him without any wires? This is where creating the actual named variable, variable type, comes in. What I'm going to do is come over here to this guy. Let's right-click, come down to New Variable, and you'll actually see Named Variable. And by default, when you first bring it in, it's got a red X and some question marks in it. This, this is kind of like a radio which hasn't been set to a specific channel. Setting it to its channel requires that we select the variable, go into its find var name property, and we're going to set this to door lock. Now notice I typed it in in all lowercase. When I press enter, notice that the capitalization updates, and now instead of a red X, we get a little green check mark to say, hey, I found the variable that you want to talk to. A signal has been established. So we're set to go. Now, all I'm going to do is disconnect this wire leading out of the target, and we're going to plug into our little door lock named variable. What's happening now is that when our little set Boolean sequence object gets a signal, it's going to transmit that signal down to the door lock named variable, which will in turn talk to our door lock variable hidden way over here without any wires connected to it. Now, all I'm going to do is take this guy who's controlling our door locks. I'm going to delete him out. And just for simplicity's sake, let's grab our existing name variable. I'll hit Control C, fly back over here to these guys, and hit Control V. Now, we technically only need one of these, and we could create wires in between the two. You know, since we've already, we're already trying to make things nice and wireless at this point, we could just paste in a second copy. It's perfectly fine to do that. And now they're both listening out for changes to the door lock variable. We've got the exact same thing we had a second ago, except now it's wireless. Let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, fast forward to the end, and already the door doesn't work. Now, it, it occurs to me that I didn't test the door to begin with, which is kind of bad form, so notice doors working, opening and closing. Now I'm gonna come up here, fast forward through all these guys, and now the door it still works. And actually, that time it got locked open, so let's take a quick look at that. That's kind of funny. So, it's almost like I found a little debugging flaw. What we're doing is we're locking the door after a three-second delay, so it's still possible that the player could lock the door open, and we don't want that to happen. So, I'm going to disconnect that guy. Let's grab our lock the door sequence along with his little named variable, and I'm going to pull it over so that right after we hit the button for the fifth time, the door immediately locks. We'll try out one more time. So right now, door works great. Next. And if we try it again, door doesn't work. We can't get out. Excellent! 
So I've just shown you how this can be handled in kind of a wireless form. Now, one of the reasons that this is also kind of an important uh, technique, the ability to have named variables. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, and I could really easily. But what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to select my door network. So let's hold down Control and Alt, and I'll just grab everybody here. I could, if I wanted to, right-click and create a new sequence out of these guys. And this is going to create a subsequence. So let's call this door system or door network. You can still call it door network if you wanted to, just without a space. Click OK. And now all of that entire network has been crushed down to a single sequence object. I can double-click on this subsequence, and there's all the nodes within it. So now, if you remember way back to the beginning, we had this open parent sequence button up in the upper left corner. This allows me to step back up. Now, the cool thing about that is that since we've set up this kind of wireless approach to our door system, our connections are still intact. We don't need to worry about any wires leading into or out of anybody. So everything will still work even though we've crushed this down to a single subsequence. So let's give this one more try. Everything is working. And now we try it, and the door doesn't work. Now, I'm not going to go too far into subsequences beyond that. However, I will kind of undo this by grabbing all of these sequence objects within my subsequence. So just as a recap, I just grabbed my little sequence object I created, double-clicked it, hold down Control and Alt, let's grab everybody. I'm going to hit Control X this time to cut, jump back up to the parent sequence, hit delete, and yes, I want to delete the selected sequence, and then hit control V, and that'll paste everybody right back in. So it's kind of a way to undo all of that collapsing that I just did a second ago. So now you've seen named variables. You've actually kind of incidentally seen subsequences as well, but we're going to take a look at using subsequences in a bit more depth a little later on. That's going to wrap things up for this video. Now from here out, I'm going to show you how to take this entire system that we did here with our, our little... Uh, wireless nodes, and how to reduce, take all this out. There will be no more named variables. We're going to do it all with a single sequence object. So all of that coming up. This is